Oh yeah, it's been a minute. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Elite Physique University. I'm John Gorman, your host. You got Jason Theobald back in the house. Jason, what's going on, man? How are you on this Thursday? Not too bad. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, 70 here in Kentucky. It's, it's sunny. I'm going to have dinner with some friends here in a bit when we're done. And um, all in all, not a bad day. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing here, man. I'm glad it's starting to warm up. We've had some weird weather. I know you're Kentucky, I'm Missouri. We're pretty close to the same. Yeah. Um, we had some really weird 50s. And then a couple of weeks ago, we had snow, which yeah, we was did, real yeah, weird. Yeah. yeah, like mid-April. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. But other than that, man, life is, uh, life is good. We've got a couple quick episodes that we're going to record. It's actually a part one and part two. Uh, ask us anything. And we're going to do some of these kind of rapid fire. And when I say rapid fire, I mean, we'll probably answer in like two, three minutes. Some of them we'll have to elaborate on, but man, we've got to split up into a couple episodes. I think, you know, 12 or 13 really good questions. So I'm yeah. excited to get to that. Um, what's new with you, man? I noticed you've got some new stuff that you've been posting on social. Let our listeners know. Yeah. So I guess it's easiest to start out with the fact that I said, I've been getting asked for a part two follow up to the hormones and yeah. metabolic adaptation class. Like people are like, okay, we get people healthy. Now, how do we proceed? How do we go into cuts? How do we, you know, what supplements need to stay? What supplements can you drop? How do you do cardio? How do you do training? So I thought, all right, fine, I'll create that. So then in turn, what I did was, because I was getting inquiries from people who wanted it, but I'm like, you really need part one. I went ahead and offered the recording at half price. So instead of 500, 250, they get the recording, the labs, case study, and then a desk reference uh, with hormones where they need to be to be optimized. They can print it out and just leave it at their desk. Um, so that's for 250. They can email me, Jason at scoobyprep.com. We use Venmo, very simple. And then I get it out to them. So that's been doing well. A lot of people are using that and wanting that. Um, so then the part two is being held June 12th. Uh, it's a Wednesday, 6 p.m. You can email me for that as well. Um, and let's see, mentorship. I had shut that down. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I feel like it, it'll be nice to bring back for right now. Um, I'm going to open it up to four people. I already have one in the folds. So that means three are left. It's going to run like this. And the best candidates are those who have been coaching for six months to three years, probably, um, and still need to level up. Uh, maybe that's functional needs. Maybe that's marketing. Maybe that's your processes aren't efficient to scale. Um, I've scaled a nutrition business so I can work with you there. Maybe you need prep work. But we'll basically spend an hour, one day a, a week and on a Zoom call, We'll go over whatever you need with your clients. If you don't have a need, then you can tell me what you'd be interested in that week and I'll lecture on it and we'll go over it. Then you have me at your disposal to ask any questions you need as they arise all throughout the week. I'm asking for a three month commitment and it will run $700 a month. So uh, if you're interested in that, Jason at scoobyprep.com. And that's probably really it right now. Otherwise with me, I'm hammering away. I've been posting pics. Uh, I'm going to do the hurricane pro, um, in October, start in August, about eight weeks out. And, uh, I don't know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I have a real at ease with it. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do these guys just keep getting better and better. And I keep getting older and older. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I feel like I'm rounder and that's what the judges wanted, but holding that as I get shredded in the lower half has always been an issue, but I'm starting with a pretty low shredded lower half as it is. So, I think I can keep myself full and come in the way they want. So we will see. So that's, that's where I'm at, man. That, that's the news going on with me. Yeah. Kind of, kind of to add on to that off topic real quick, I had a conversation with a, a friend and client of mine um, just about beating your, your next physique. You know, he's had three years off and I posted something about um, somebody just coming back to beat their last physique because yeah. you can't control yeah. who shows up. What's your mindset around that? I know it's, it's, it's one thing as a coach, but sometimes we both, you, you and I are both competitive in some of the yep. things we do. Yep. Are you aiming to just beat your, your next physique? Or do you really think about these guys that you're going to step on stage with? I mean, we're all different. We can say one thing, but we're all a little different. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I do still somewhat think about the competition, but that's how I get driven. Um, yeah. It's probably out of fear. And I'm also used to winning. I mean, I've won more first places than I've yeah. ever lost. Um, you know, in the pro ranks, I still yet to crack it. I've had a second, a fifth and a sixth, but that's it. You know, I've always been in the medals. 
Um, so that type of fear and things drive me. I don't think my Tampa was my best physique ever. I mean, that was a rushed prep. I think I came in a little flatter. I mean, it was a good package for three and a half weeks of prep. I mean, I got six at the Tampa, yeah. so I, I can't complain. But I think Kentucky was when I hit my, my best. And um, so if I'm looking to beat a physique, it would be that Kentucky physique, yeah. if I'm being honest with myself. Um, but I like to win – and I like to beat people. So, um, you know, just saying I don't care what happens as long as I'm better doesn't always work quite with me. Um, but I get that thought process. But when you're really competitive and you're that close, that's just not good enough. You, you, if I'm going to do what I want, I want to win. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. I get it totally. I just figure it'd be good for our, our listeners to hear too, just kind of coming from you, not just the coach, but the athlete. Um, I am going to put all of your information in the show notes, guys. If you want to get a hold of Jason, I highly recommend that um, to have that recording for 250. It's basically yep. you're getting the damn class. It's a recorded yep. class. Yep. Like you cannot beat that. I urge you guys to get in on that. Um, and those three spots on mentorship, I'm going to put his, e his email right here in the show notes. So when you're done listening, just click on that. It'll pull it up and it'll email him directly. You so. get the PowerPoint too. It's like 30 slides. So like if they don't even like recordings, they can use the PowerPoint and walk through setting up their client to, to fix them. So either way, you know, but they're getting it all. Yeah, it's full protocols. Um, yeah. I still have it from the summit and I'm, I know you've changed it a lot since then, but um, it's been one of the things I've used and I'm helping a lot of people now. So I definitely recommend it. Not a lot new for me. Uh, we did drop a new fat muscle project, um, essential amino acid supplement, sour gummy worm. It's definitely our best tasting and that's been fun. And dude, we're just growing. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that real quick after we get off the show, but man, we grew another, well, a lot, like 30% in a month. It was nice. fucking crazy. Yeah. So it's just been fun with that. But then I've needed to just de-stress and like get the hell away from everything for a while. And I've, some people know I've got a pool table at home, but I used to play very competitively and I'm actually at my best ever. So I've been playing in pool tournaments, man. And I've placed in my last four, I've placed first, second and two thirds. So I'm having fun right. with that again. It's a good way to, to not stress and think about some of the other stuff going on. But other than that, man, uh, we do want to let our listeners know we're going to be dropping these episodes about once every two weeks um, just because we, you and I are both so busy with all the businesses that we own. So we do want to pe let people know we were doing it every week. It's just not feasible. So we're going to drop them about every two weeks, which is still good. I know a lot of people that have bigger podcasts like this, they drop them once a month. So and who knows, like maybe in September, you know, when things slow down, I'm not opposed to getting back to full time, um, once a week, maybe you can too, but I know, I know it's going to be a busy summer for all of us here. Yeah. I know the winter time too, like you said, like we might be able to crank some more out, but if we can release them sooner, we will. But right now guys just plan on about every two weeks. So Jason, let's get into this. I've got compiled a bunch of questions sent in from our listeners and we're just going to jump right in. Yeah. Um, and we are addressed each of us in some of these. Um, this first yeah. one is name some of the best natural ways to boost testosterone for women and naturally boost it. And I, I get this a lot. We've had this sent in a lot. We both have products that help with this. Um, what are some of the best ways that you like to help your natural females boost testosterone when they need it? Um, so there's a couple ways. Like first, you know, I adjust diet. I always, you know, try to adjust the diet. You know, nutrition is important, right? So we have to look at that first before we go throw in supplements and things. Um, I like to get fats higher. Um, a lot of times I have these cases and, you know, testosterone is low. I generally with a woman go ahead and reformulate their macros and get their fast about 65, somewhere around there. Um, a lot of anti-inflammatory fats, but you know, cholesterol is the building block to testosterone. So if you're, you know, dieting low fat, that's going to be a problem. Um, so uh, I get their fats up and then, you know, there's a few supplements that you can use. We have our jump start which has, you know, things that support libido, support testosterone, Humana for it helps support it. Dim was in there and will help, you know, lower estrogen in turn bringing up testosterone. So Jumpstart starts for, works really well. Four caps, two times a day. Be Vital, by, um, I believe that's Biotics Research, works well. Two to three caps, um, two times a day. Boron works really well to bring up free test. And then you've got your hormone optimizer that also works well. So first get the diet right, you know, and then obviously like if there's sleep issues, you got to deal with all that. 
If there's gut issues, you got to fix that. So really it's like rounding out the health. And then there's a few supplements that I like, and I just name those for you that are naturally occurring that you can add once you get sleep going well, you know, more fatty acids, more essential fatty acids in the diet, um, things of that nature. So it's kind of a, a, a well-rounded approach. There's not just one thing I can tell you to throw at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you named everything that I was going to talk about. And the other thing too, I like to mention is normally when I have a female come to me, that's low test or they just need to get it into better optimal ranges. Almost every single time, once I start fixing sleep and in turn addressing cortisol, those are the, that right there just allows testosterone to come up just by fixing cortisol, just by getting it lower. And it, you know, it may not even show super high on labs, but someone's getting shitty sleep. So you adjust their sleep. And the next thing you know, you know, over time taking those supplements, it's able to come up. So, you know, adjusting cortisol is something you guys can go back and listen to episode. I believe it was three. It was a cortisol deep dive. It was two or three, go back and listen to that. But um, that's a quick way to get natural levels up for women. Uh, Jason, let's talk about the best time for females to have labs drawn. We've talked about this multiple times, but yeah. you know, the luteal phase comes up and, and I've got some other things I want you to address here, but you know, I like to recommend 19 to 21 days after the first day of their period. You've mentioned that as well. I actually got that from you. Um, what about if someone has it drawn at other times, what do they need to look at on their labs? Because that is when it gets confusing for some people who have never done this before. Well, you know, if it's done at other times, the labs, when they're looking at progesterone, it will tell you like follicular phase, um, ovulation, you know, different things like that. So you can, you can make sure that you're in range. But the reason we do the luteal is because at that time it spikes, progesterone does. And so then if we don't see that spike, we know that we're dealing with, you know, a depressed progesterone score and we want it to be around 10 or better. So that's why we do the luteal. But if it goes in the other phases, we can go ahead and just read the labs based on where, you know, what, what phase they're in their period uh, or their menses. Uh, but, you know, let's see if there's anything else that would be a problem during that. I think estradiol might also um, change based on yeah, where they're at. So they would have to make sure they read that properly too. Um, so, you know, I prefer luteal and, but here's the thing, if they're on birth control and they've lost their period or they've lost it through stress and dieting, just get the labs because you don't know when your period is. And, right. and I can tell you with no period, your progesterone is going to be low. Anyways, it's already going to be low and you're going to be relatively estrogen dominant. So just get them done. Yeah. Uh -huh. I can tell you the fun ones to look at is, you know, you have them all set up and they're getting ready to do it 19 to 21 days after the first day of their start of their cycle. And all of a sudden they start their period like fucking two, three weeks, you know, out of whack, you know, because then, you know, people that are having periods too often, like that's always fun um, to try and figure out where the hell they landed. You know, they said, Hey, I went to get my, my labs drawn. I already had my doctor's appointment set, but I started my cycle like two weeks early because they were all jacked up. Like those are always, those are always fun to look at. And it just, to me, just becomes a crap shoot, but I just try my best to get them to stick to that 19 to 21 because I mean, the rest of it's kind of out of, out of our control, I believe. Um, anything else that you want to add there before we move on to the next one? I, th I mean, I think that covers the question, you know, yeah, I don't think there's does. anything else. I, I know I think Dutch will says a 17 to 21. So like if they take a Dutch test and they see that, just listen to the test. Like it's, it's yeah. fine. And that's probably fine for labs too. But 19 to 21 seems to be a little more guided, but you know, if, if you can't, if you can get it on the 18th day and that's it and you got it, or you got to skip and wait 30 days, just do the 18th day. Yeah. You know? Hey, here's, here's one that I know we've both gotten a lot over the years. Um, please talk about net carbs versus tracking all your carbs on a diet. So I, I think a lot of people, there might be some people that are listening and they're like, what the hell are net carbs? And that's, you'll see a lot of, there's a lot of plans out there. There's a lot of foods that we see this on where they say four net carbs per serving. And that's when, you know, I can think of like real high fiber foods, like a high fiber tortilla. There's 20 carbs in a tortilla, 15 of its fiber. And then they may say there's only five net carbs. So they're trying, what they're saying is like fiber doesn't really count as a carb. And a lot of people with keto try and count net carbs because they're trying to keep total carbs low. Jason, do you tell your people just to track all their carbs or do you let them track net carbs? Man, I know. <laughs> I hate this fucking question to be honest with you. Like, 
I don't eat any of those fucking foods. Like yeah. I really don't. Like I I stick to cream or ice. Like what's on the fucking label? That's the amount of carbs. Like sweet potatoes. That what's yeah. I, um, I, I'm kind of fucking weird on this. Like I don't track veggies. I don't track like if someone uses Metamucil, I don't make them track it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, as I build diets, I generally just read the damn label. And if it says 20 carbs, I put fucking 20 carbs there. Yeah. I, I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a walking contradiction, but I never sat there and, and split hairs over this shit. And, and I think you that's, you might have a better answer for him that I'm just being honest. No, I think honestly, I think that's the best approach because I, I know some people like to over, and I hate to say overthink, but they, they think they're doing the right thing. So they want to try and be as smart of as, as possible or they want to be as accurate as possible. But I just tell people, I don't tell them to track their veggies, but I tell them to try and keep it the same. I so don't go binge on fucking veggies because you're sure. starving, um, but try and keep your fiber and your veggies the same. So the scale stays the same and you don't have it going up and down. And we're seeing all these weird readings and us as a coach, we don't know what the hell's going on. Um, and I tell them don't track net carbs because all that's going to do is that's going to give you a reason to try and go add food. And that's what I want people to avoid. Cause they're like, well, shit, this has got fiber. I can eat all that I want. And the next thing you know, they're backed up because high fiber, people think it's going to make you shit. It's not. It's like adding cars to a traffic jam. It's actually going to back you up and cause your weight to go up. So I'm not yeah, big you create on that big old plug of a stool. It just sits there. Right. <laughs> can't work through. Right. <laughs> it comes out and you feel like you gave birth to a cow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess from Jason and I both just, just track all your carbs, folks. Don't worry about that. And I know like people on keto are trying to keep track of, of that kind of stuff. And I guess there is some merit to that, but just keep your carbs as absolutely low as you can. Don't, I'm telling you right now, don't go eat those high fiber tortillas. If you're on keto, don't do that. That's not right. keto. You're, right. It's not. So right. um, don't do it. Um, Jason, I actually, this is a question from me to you, okay. uh, even though I know the answer, but this is something that you and I talked about when we were down in Tampa and it, it involves sex hormone binding globulin. Um, if someone's on HRT, on HRT, we know that they can go a little lower on fats because, you know, they're, they're already running the hormone by putting it in their body. But a lot of people want to go super, super low fat. What did you see when you saw super low fat? And was there any negative side effects to that? So, I mean, I can speak on that. Like I did that for probably two years. Cause I mean, I can just stay fucking ripped that way. Right. And eventually what happened for me was my SHBG tanked. And you need that to circulate hormones. I mean, you know, I think in the bodybuilding community, everyone thinks, oh, you just want that super low and you're going to have this awesome free test. And that is true. So you probably do respond to gear better in a, in a lower amount of it. Um, but at the same time, if you're not circulating your androgens, you're not getting the most out of them, sex drive tanks, things of that nature. Um, in terms of other people, like they might not be prone to that, but, you know, they're not getting, you're not getting as much essential fatty acids, which is heart healthy. Um, and then there's some people that need, you know, a nice fat intake to have good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one of them. My cholesterol seems to be a little better when my fat intake is, is moderate, like 40 to 30 grams. Me too. But at the end of the day, what I, the conclusion I've came to is use, if you're on hormones, yes, you can go lower fat for a longer period of time. But use it for your cutting phases and don't live like that year round. That's, that's kind of what I've come to the conclusion. And I'll tell you, there were probably days I was getting 10 grams of fat. Like I can literally eat egg whites and cream of rice and a salad and be happy as, as shit. Um, and I didn't really feel bad, but it did take its toll in certain areas. And I think um, for other people too, I would at least set it at 30 to 40 if you want to try. Now, if you want to cut – and you're on hormones, drop them to 20, drop them to 15, but don't live there. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that was exactly why I wanted to bring that question up because I just think there's a lot of people and, and I did it as well. It fixed my cholesterol. I dropped my fats real low down to about 25 and it was no problem. A lot of people are like, how the hell do you only get 25? You just eat fat-free foods. I know it's like not that big of a fucking deal. Yeah. And then throw fish oil in for heart health. Like that, that's what I was doing. Um, I know there for a while you were doing when I stayed with you, I know you don't necessarily eat this a lot unless you're traveling, but Greek yogurt, zero fat, rice cake, zero fat, cream or yep. rice, egg whites, yep. shake, like there's zero yep. fat in your protein. Yep. Guys, it's not hard. And then you were taking in fats to get your fats, like fish oils and things. Yeah, like that. I was hitting a few fish oils a day to at least get the EFAs. And like I said, I felt fine and I was 
really, really tight. Yeah. And it hasn't been that bad. It's not like I put on a ton of fat doing it. You know, now I use some MCT, about five grams every meal. And uh, you burn that a little bit more like a carbohydrate. Yeah. I can notice I'm not quite as crisp, but it doesn't matter. Like as soon as I want to prep for a show, I'll just drop it, right. go back to my 10 to 15 grams of fat up my carbs actually, and just shred up. So here's a question sent in to me. I had made a Facebook post on this a couple years ago and someone had dug it up and was asking me, I thought, you know what, this will make for a good question on the show. And they said, John, you'd mentioned something about whole foods being better for fat loss than processed foods. Um, and it involved calorie burning. Can you elaborate? Here's, here's something that I want to point out that people don't understand. If you took two diets, a highly in the same calories, same macros, a highly, highly processed diet with high glycemic carbs or a whole food based diet foods from the ground, right? Sweet potato, rice, meats, eggs, things of that nature. Or you had like pop tarts and shakes and a lot of this stuff. Processed foods break down a lot faster and they don't cause the same thermic effect. So when you eat things like whole foods and, and healthier foods from the ground, it causes you to use more calories and it has a bigger thermic effect to actually break that down. So is it going to cause a ton more fat loss? No, but that's just one thing to consider. If you're just eating a bunch of garbage and shit, like my clients and I were back in 2014, you're not getting the same thermic effect. So there is a huge difference. But it's not just from calorie burning, Jason, uh, as, as you've been preaching. What's that going to do to inflammation? What's that going to do to gut health and things like that, right? Also, like, as you've pointed out before on the podcast, um, the labels, you know, are able to be about 20% in any given direction. Yeah. So if that makes up a bulk of your food, you know, you could be 20% over your calories on, on any given day. So. Yeah. What, one of the first things I do when somebody stalls out, and I know they're being pretty flexible on their diet, I say, hey, send me a list of foods you're eating. And I immediately eliminate any of the packaged stuff. Yeah. I tell them, just eat. You know exactly what's in a sweet potato. You know exactly what's in oats or peanut butter. Like eliminate that stuff. And it's just going to make your counting more accurate. Um, but it does drop inflammation. And there is a better thermic effect. So when it all comes back to this, you know, there was this huge, you know, if it fits your macros versus bro foods back in the day. And it was super uncool to eat healthy but listen, it's, it, it always to me comes back to eat as fucking healthy as you can. Like just eat as healthy as you can to be able to stick to the diet. I think that's always my message to my clients. Um, you have anything else that you want to add there? No, I think we covered that one. Good. Okay. Here's another good one. Um, is creatine and bang energy drinks a good source? <laughs> and um, I think what a lot of people don't realize here, man, is it, and I didn't back in the day because back when I first started, I thought, man, I want to create a creatine supplement in water. It would just be ready to go and it would be super simple. But once creatine's in a solution for, a, you know, and I don't know the exact amount of time, I'd have to ask someone like Dr. Chad Kirksick, who's a creatine specialist. It breaks down and it basically renders it useless over time once it sits in fluid. And if yeah. actually, yeah, and if you don't watch it, 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 it'll drive your creatinine levels on your labs up too. Um, when it's useless like that. So I don't recommend Bang Energy. Do you remember any older old school supplements that had like a liquid creatine? I thought there were some back in the day. Yeah, there were some that were liquid. Uh, yeah. Like Pinnacle had a liquid. Pinnacle not around it was. anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it was sweet, but I mean, now we know it probably was not doing a damn thing. Um, and I'm looking at the Bang. I think they oh, say shit. it only has between four to 32 milligrams of creatine. Right. I mean, we know you got to take like at least two and a half grams. Right. So if you're a small female. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, even if it was effective, like not, you know, ruined from sitting or been, you know, degraded from sitting in fluid, it's not going to have an effect at that dosing. So it's, it's a sales tactic. Yeah. It's a uh, uh, pixie dusting. It, yeah. that's, when, that's when you see supplements that list, like I, I've seen it quite a bit with like glutamine, like there's glutamine in this product and there's like, you know, less than a gram in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't um, know the glutamine, yeah. So real quick question for you. When was the last time you had a bang energy drink and have you ever had one? I've never had a bang energy drink. It says, uh, it says super creatine on there. I think it says super okay. aminos. It's got aminos in it. Pixie does right. it's finest. I think for our listeners, probably no, at our next, our, at our next event that we're going to have this fall down in Tampa, I think we need to bring a bang energy drink up there for you to drink just one time. <laughs> it's kind of like watching someone cheat on the diet. In front I of mean, everybody. can you get the one that tastes like the white monster at least? 
they don't have any that tastes like that. Uh, and see, I only drink one of those like maybe once every two months, and I like yeah. the White Monster. So, man, I don't know. It's I'll, a, I'll sip it, but I'm not finishing it. No, it's 300 megs of caffeine. Yeah, fuck can, that. Dude. I'll that, sip it. You talk about fucking someone up. So Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't use caffeine in that amount. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and split this here. Um, guys, be ready to listen to part two, and everything that we've talked about will be in the show notes. So from myself and Jason, we're out of here. Thanks, guys. See ya.